Welcome back to Just One Question, the 90 billionth episode. No, it's uh, <laughs> it's so hard to tell in this COVID world uh, what day it is and, and where we are. But uh, I am glad to be here, and I am especially glad to be here with my good buddy, Todd Duncan, who is on the other side of this Zoom. And I'm just sorry we're not meeting in person because uh, it would be it will be great to see you again when we get the chance. But uh, let me quickly introduce Todd. He's a sales entrepreneur and has in excess, it says here, so it must be true, of five million students around the globe that he has mentored and taught in mortgage, banking, real estate, and financial services. I knew you were a powerhouse, Todd, but I didn't realize you were that much of a winner. All right. <laughs> so uh, Todd became a real estate broker and licensed loan originator and was successfully involved in over 5,000 real estate transactions. Uh, and then he launched the High Trust Company, which is where he's cooking now with a vision of transforming how sales professionals build high performing mortgage and real estate practices. And this is the one that I really mm, uh, have to take my hat off to him for. This is the polite one. He's the author of 17 books, including New York Times bestsellers, Time Traps, Proven Strategies for Swamped Salespeople, and the big one, High Trust Selling, Make More Money in Less Time with Less Stress. Welcome, Todd Duncan. Nick, it is awesome to be with you, and I too echo your thoughts. I'd love to be <clears throat> in Boston. Uh, we're right across the desk from you right now having this chat, or you can be here on the West Coast, but always good to be with you, my friend. Excellent. Thanks for, uh, thanks for making some time. It's, uh, it's a crazy time for us all, so I really do appreciate it. So uh, take just a second to check in, tell us how you're doing, and then we'll get to the just one question. Yeah, no, um, I think all things considered, we're, we're doing great. You know, we've been uh, hyper vigilant and just try being, being safe, but being balanced in being safe. And, uh, you know, it's interesting to be an entrepreneur and own a business. And one, one week your people are here and the next week they're gone. And then the next week they come back and then the week after that they're gone. And it's just a little bit of a merry-go-round right now as we kind of balance out local governments and things like that, which I can probably say to your listener base, uh, we, we, we have our favorites and we have our not too favorites, <laughs> political officials, let's just call mm. them that. And mm. yeah, so, you know, at the end of the day, it's, it's, you got to kind of roll with the punches and, uh, but still trying to stay super active, you know, keeping the mind going, keeping the body going and trying to figure out that piece and then really being grateful. I mean, being grateful that, you know, that we're healthy as a husband and wife, our kids are healthy as, mm. as two young, two young men. And, um, you know, you just, uh, you sit here and you go, it could be a lot worse. It could be a lot worse. We could be in a different country. We could be in a, a different political system. It could be a lot worse. So we're grateful, grateful that we're still standing and grateful that it looks like uh, we, we will be. So it's all good. All right. Excellent. Thanks for that. I'm, I am also glad to see you and yours uh, uh, healthy and, and safe. All right. Let's get to it because uh, I've got just one question for you and it takes a little setup. So here, here we go. There was once upon a time, a thing called the Black Death, the bubonic plague that everybody's heard about. And fortunately, none of us had to live through. Uh, when it was done, uh, much of uh, Europe and Asia was laid to waste, but um, there was this explosion of creativity and change and artistic ferment and changes in political structures and, and religious structures um, that lasted another 100, 150 years called the Renaissance. And, and similarly, after the Spanish flu in the early 1900s, only lasted a couple of years, but it was horrific. 50 million people died. And what we got in response, because you can't keep humanity down, what we got in response was 10 years of, of uh, the Bauhaus and Art Deco and the flappers and uh, speakeasies and all kinds of fun things, including jazz and, and all sorts of uh, creati creativity and innovation in the arts. Um, and again, change in political structures and so on. So my question to you, long run up, thanks for, thanks for waiting. My question to you is imagine for us, given your perspective, what do you think the world, the explosion of creativity, what do you think the world's gonna bring us once we're through this pandemic? Uh, the, the first answer is greatness. 
um, you know, the second answer is, is breakthrough and, and innovation. And I think it's interesting that you brought up the bubonic plague because uh, in, in the news over the last couple of weeks, there's been at least two instances, one in Colorado where a couple of squirrels were found that tested positive for the bubonic plague. Mm. And then most recently in Los Angeles where they have a really bad rat problem with the homeless community, <clears throat> they had three rats that had the same strain of the bubonic plague. And when that news hit, there, there really wasn't a lot of fear and there wasn't a lot of, we better get ready for this bubonic plague. And, and the reason why there wasn't a lot is because we already have we already have the, you know, the, the, the treatment for that. We already have the vaccine for that. We already have, you know, and I think about growing up in La Jolla, California, I think about Jonas Salk and I think about polio and I think about how, how long it took to create a breakthrough for something that was really a worldwide plague, you know, a worldwide uh, scenario. And from the moment COVID broke, I don't know if it was just my spirit in terms of positivity or uh, I'm a hopeful guy and I always try to look at the glasses half full. In fact, I got my, my water thing right here and it says my cup is always full. I, I try to have that kind of outlook to everything. I said to people, I said, you know, we're going to have breakthroughs from this that are going to be unprecedented. We're going to have breakthroughs from this that are going to be unparalleled. I mean, we're going to come up with, we're not only going to come up with a medical solution to COVID, but we're going to come up with three or four other respiratory breakthroughs because of what we're going through. And I'm not a pro, Nick, but I just was thinking, man, this is going to be okay, even though it, it hurts. And even though every life that, you know, that falls to this, this disease is a life that I wish wouldn't fall um, through all the, the challenge and through all the adversity and through all of the uncertainty, um, humanity does win. We rally, we rally and we figure out the answer. So you know, from my perspective, where do we go? We go, we go forward. We go forward. We get, we go fast. We, we get back to, to business as safely and as reasonably quickly as we can. And we innovate. We innovate like we've never innovated before. And, and, you know, for me, it was like, I'm in the speaking business. I get hired by bureaus and companies to fly all over the world and show up at a venue and speak. And, you know, I can remember the, the, the first weekend in March when we were coming home from Savannah and uh, it didn't look like events were going to be allowed. And most certainly within the next two weeks, we had 28 events canceled. And, and you're sitting here going like this, which is why I, two weeks ago I had hair and you, you kind of start doing this and you kind of go, what? All what gone is, now. No, right? And okay, so what is, what is the positive of this, right? What's the positive? And so we innovated really fast. Right behind this logo is a $100,000 recording studio. I've built this in about five weeks. And I wow. didn't have access to that. And I figured, you know, if I, can, if I can message to the world messages more frequently, um, less expensively, and more consistently because I've got a resource that I can innovate around, then that's going to be a good thing. And then the other thing I got to thinking about is what technology is necessary if, if live events were never offered again, what technology is necessary to impact as many people as we can impact? You're in the thought business. I'm in the thought business. We try to change lives and impact people. And, uh, and so we invested uh, quite a bit of money into the technology that would allow us to, to live stream and, I got to tell you, one of the early breakthroughs was how do we how do we get a what would otherwise be a buy a ticket come to an event? How do we do that in a virtual world? And our first attempt, we did it for twenty people, and we had a whole bunch of breakdowns. Mm -hmm. And then we did it for a hundred people, and we had fewer breakdowns. Three weeks ago, we did it for four thousand people, and had only one or two hiccups. And my point in all that is. You've got to test what you implement, and then you've got to realize that if it's the right decision, you can do more of what you did pre-COVID in a way that you never were able to do before. And for us, we're getting ready to, to, to host our flagship event, which normally has a couple thousand people. And because we innovated fast, you know, we're going to be able to impact, it looks like, close to 50,000 people without anybody having to buy an airline ticket, buy a hotel, travel to a foreign city, and we're going to be able to deliver the impact. So where do we go? Where does the world go? I think the world in five years is innovated. I don't think COVID is an issue. I think it's a distant memory, uh, just like all these other ones are. I think we're going to be better for it. Um, I hope our country is better for it. Um, that, that's the part that concerns me the most without getting anything political. I just, I hate 
the unrest that we have in, in the country over mm-hmm. something that, you know, really is, is a health issue that's of a global proportion that we're going to fix and we're going to solve. And there's so many things connected to this that just don't make sense. But I hope we're bigger, better, stronger, and healthier as a country and, and as a society. I think that's kind of what I see. And to your point, you know, we get through, it's, it's, it's like the idea, you don't just get through something. It, you can, I mean, that can be your attitude. I'm just going to get through this. But the other thing is I want to grow through this. Mm-hmm. And I got to tell you, Nick, right now as a friend, I've got stuff that I've learned in the last four months that has forever transformed my life and the life of my company. Mm-hmm. And there is good in that. There is good in that. And so I choose to, I choose to feel the good, look at the good, hold on to the good and, uh, and be blessed through the good. And in the midst of that, you come out the other side a winner. Awesome. Todd Duncan, I love that answer. Thank you for your optimism, my friend. Thank you for your spirit. Yes, we will prevail. Yes, it looks hard at times, but yes, we will prevail. Todd Duncan, everybody, thank you so much.